Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Luke Freudenberg. Uh, I'm vice chair of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. I am seated as chair tonight. Uh, directly to my right is uh, member Sarah Silk. To my immediate left is Tim Cronin. Next to Tim is Dave Senecal. On the end of the table there is Tavis Austin, our town planner. Uh, today is Monday, September 20th, 2021. It is 7 p.m. and we are at the Great Hall 84 South Main Street here in Wolfboro. Uh, I just did the roll call. Uh, do we have any unfinished business? I, I have a quick question. Are we without a secretary tonight? We are without a secretary in the room, but the secretary is watching. Okay. Is there any other unfinished business? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Uh, tonight we have Taylor Holmes. Uh, I'll ask the, uh, the clerk to read the, uh, the case. Uh, tonight's first case is Taylor Holmes on Taylor Drive, tax map number 203-47. Case number 16-V-21, public hearing for a variance from Article 175, Section 105B of the Wolfboro Planning and Zoning Ordinance to allow a variance for the allowed maximum height in the zone. Formal submissions have been placed with the town. Today we had a site visit with myself, Tim Cronin, Sarah Silk, Tavis Austin, Dave Senecal, and Steve Paquin. Luke? Yes. Um, before we open the public hearing, I would just like to request that Dave Senecal step down. Reason? Yes, um, I understand that you have a close relative that's in a butter. And one of the reasons they have in here is a big reason for approving this is because enhanced value in the neighborhood and Money is usually the bottom line for anyone to have a perceived conflict of interest, whether there is an actual one or not. I have elected not to sit on this hearing. I would not step down. I'm not, I am stepping down from the hearing, but not because of the reason that Ms. Silk has mentioned. I do, ha one of the abutters happens to be my sister and her husband. Oh, but I still feel in my mind I could make a reasonable judgment uh, on this case, but I'm not going to uh, do that. So I'm stepping down. Uh, I'd like to ask the applicant, since there is not a full board present and there will only be uh, three members here seated tonight that are voting, on this application, would the uh, would the applicant like to move forward with the three members that are currently seated, or would you like to wait for a, a seating of all five members? Fine. I'm going to open the uh, public hearing. Uh, is there a member of the organization who would like to speak and walk us through the, the points? Just identify yourself by name. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. We'll try that again. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. My name is Kirk Beswick. I'm the Vice President of Facilities for Taylor Community, located in uh, Laconia. We also own property here. Uh, I'd like to start by summarizing our project for the board today and thank them for allowing us to uh, appear before you today. And after I've done the summary uh, and described what we're asking for by way of variance, I'd like to then take the time to introduce the team that I have assembled here today before you. So. By way of summary, what Taylor community is uh, asking for today is very simple. We're looking for a variance for a height restriction for the building we'd like to build on our Back Bay campus. The building itself is a continuation of what we already do. Uh, as you know, we are a continuing care retirement community. We take care of the elderly. 
from independent housing through assisted living, nursing, and memory care. Uh, and the building that we have decided to build there is just an extension of that care located on this campus. The building um, will have all levels of those care, uh, will address the needs of the community that we have on our Back Bay campus as well as our residents at Sugar Hill and give them an outlet uh, to go when they need further care. Uh, and additionally, it'll serve to help the community at large because it'll provide an outlet for those members of the Wolfboro community and the community at large when they need additional care in their uh, elderly uh, condition. The building itself, uh, as it's currently designed, will be a three-story building uh, with segregated floors based on the level of care. It will also have a number of amenities that will help those folks enjoy life in their elderly uh, in the last years. Uh, it will also have a, a quite an extensive array of gardens on the outside, so it will be environmentally attractive. And it's designed to be in keeping with the current cottages that we have, which is a very residential nature. Um, the property is, that we visited today is where the building would be uh, built. Uh, we've done preliminary work on that site to indicate it's a very suitable site for construction. We've gone so far as to do borings. We know what's in the ground. Um, and so far, uh, everything looks really great. The, the property itself, um, as I said, is definitely uh, residential in nature. It's a continuation of what we already do, uh, both on our Back Bay and on the Sugar Hill campus. And it's an extension of what's really needed in Wolfboro in general. Uh, in a general summary, we could say that in America today, 50,000 people turn 65 a day. Uh, as we know, the boomer generation is aging and needs a place to go. And we intend to build this property as an outlet for those folks to give them a place to go. That's not only a very home-like, but gives them a place where they can be fully supported. Uh, I also want to mention that um, as we reviewed the draft and the actual final master plan for Wolfboro, elderly care and continuing care retirement communities appeared more than once there. So we believe that this project is in keeping with the direction that the uh, people of Wolfboro want to go. The variance requested um, really addresses the height restriction of 35 feet to the height per the way the zoning regulation is written. In your packet, you'll see that we, uh, our architects that are here today have defined how we arrived at the actual height requirement and how it was uh, arrived at basing um, the calculations on the uh, site plan that you have in front of you. And we can get into that a little later on. But specifically, the requirement uh, to meet the 35 feet is what we'll be discussing tonight, and we're just over that, and that's really what we're asking for today, to um, have a variance to that height restriction. I'd like to take a moment to just introduce the team that we've assembled here today, and I'll start on the right. My right, we have Michael Flaherty, CEO, in the back. We have Jeff Downing, which is the president and owner of Coniston Construction, Inc., which is our construction management firm to his left. And we have our attorneys, Margaret Progress here, and also Randy Walker with us. And on the other side of the auditorium, in the front row, uh, we have Nick Schedule, which is our civil engineer representing Du Bois and King. And behind him, we have Mark Moeller, Chief Architect for JSA, our architectural firm out of Portsmouth. And behind me, we have a whole bunch of folks from Taylor Community and Back Bay. <laughs> Any questions so far? Um, would it be appropriate at this point that I read the five questions that are defining what the variance request is all about today, and then we can go into what our position is on those? Yeah, uh, you do very good uh, paperwork here defining each each of the five. So if you want to summarize and just so we can uh, go through each one, but uh, we have we have it in the packets too, the information. So if you want to just run through those, that would be great. Yeah, and I'm not one to really just read verbatim. So I've got kind of summaries um, where we defined what our responses are to the five questions as they do each one. If you have questions specific to those, please stop me after I've done each one and we can go through it. So the first question is the variance will not be contrary to the public interest and we 
basically took that question to mean is the zoning ordinance as it's defined where it, it has specific height restrictions for based on the slope of the roof is really designed to protect the public interest so that you're not building a skyscraper in a residential neighborhood and when we looked at that there's a couple of things that we think definitely meet that requirement first off uh, the building that we're designed and, and we intend to build definitely uh, is designed to meet the welfare of the community at large. And as we just talked about, uh, so many people are aging in place and need an outlet to go, that the public interest is best served by giving them a place where they can actually uh, live out their elder years in a place of comfort in a residential setting. So the community at large is served best by us being able to build this building, even if it's slightly over the maximum height allowed by the zoning ordinance. And as we already mentioned, 50,000 people are turning 65 a day here in the United States. There's definitely a very strong need, not only in the Wolfboro community, but across America for place, places to be built to house these folks as the boomer generation ages. So our variance request, while we are over the variance height, we're meeting the spirit of the ordinance and that we're meeting the public interest by building a building that meets the necessary uh, provision to provide housing for the elderly in, in the Wolfboro community at large. Any questions? And as I mentioned earlier, we noted in our response in your packet that the master plan, we cited the page where um, CCRCs and elderly housing are mentioned in the master plan. And then uh, I believe the reference was that uh, the town of Wolfboro should be looking for opportunities to increase that type of housing within the town limits. Moving on to question two, which is the spirit of the ordinance is observed. We took that to mean that the spirit of the ordinance is to protect abutters, to protect the residential nature and uh, the vacation land nature of Wolfboro by limiting the style and the height of the buildings as they could be built. And that's a, a, honestly a, a good thing to do. So we defined some things here that, you know, and those of you who went out to the site noticed that the area that we intend to build are pretty much shielded on all sides. We have our cottages, we have wo uh, woods all around this property so that none of the abutters can actually see this property. So if the spirit of the ordinance is to make sure we're protecting abutters, um, the first thing we note is that they're protected because the building height and this building itself will be protected from the abutters by the forested areas that are around the property. Uh, B, the abutting views aren't hindered because no one will be able to see this property. The, the trees we're estimating around this property are all over 70 feet and we're looking at uh, a tree height that's much greater than the height that we're asking for for this building. So again, the, the nature of the site is very much protecting the building itself. See, you know, when we thought about this, you know, um, the team that you've assembled here before you today took great lengths. We've been working on this project for quite a while, and we've taken every reasonable precaution, uh, and even some that were unreasonable, to try and meet this 35-foot height restriction. Um, so we didn't spare any effort in that, and I think my team can basically attest to that. But every, every effort to reduce the size and footprint and height of this building has already been taken. So we're meeting the spirit of the ordinance and taking those precautions and reducing the overall height of this building uh, to the best of our ability, noting that it's already well shielded by all of the abutting trees and no one else will be impacted by the building itself. Third question is, is substantial justice done? And, and there's something that kind of hit me, and I'll just read it. It says, the loss of the health care building is not outweighed by the gain to the general public in denying this variance. And so if we look at it this way, if the building was just a few feet higher than the max 35 feet that is allowable by zoning ordinance, denying this would mean that a building that would meet not only our community of both Back Bay, Sugar Hill, and the Laconia campus of our elderly residents, but would also deny the current members of the Wolfboro community the opportunity to have a place where they can actually reside in their elder years. So the variance satisfied the requirement of fairness through the following. We did take every reasonable effort to limit the building height, 
the planned building height is really isn't reason, unreasonable, um, knowing that uh, it's really residential in nature. And while it may be three stories in height, the building has been designed by our architects to be very much cottage-like in its exterior, and the roof profiles have been basically limited to give it a very much residential appearance. The building design is in keeping with the style of the existing senior community. So Back Bay has been in existence since 2000, um, and it's been residential since the very beginning. And the building design done by JSA actually is very much in keeping with what was designed originally. And the final building height is significantly lower than the surrounding forest, as we mentioned. So basically, if you were to walk the perimeter of that building on abutting properties, you would really be unable to see this building for the majority of the year. Number four, the values of the surrounding properties will not be diminished. From a very basic level, the investment that Taylor community is making into this property with just this project is estimated to be somewhere between 22 and 25 million dollars. That's strictly in construction and soft costs. That doesn't include um, the other secondary benefits to the town, which will include additional employees, the expenses, and all the things that will be purchased in the town. And all those, uh, the investment that Taylor will make in all those things will certainly benefit not only the abutters by the improvement to our property, but by the increased revenue and all the things that will happen in Wolfboro by the building of this, or the construction of this building. Uh, B, we noted that the building would be constructed uh, in, a, in an existing senior community. Uh, we're not asking to start a new type of community. We're already in existence. We are already a senior community, and the cottages already exist, and this building will be completely in keeping with the cottages. The building itself will enhance the value of the property as a senior community because now, instead of having 24 to 40 individual or uh, independent living cottages, we will now have 24 independent cottages, but we'll also have assisted living, nursing, and memory care, which will provide an outlet for our existing residents, which will increase the value to those residents because now they have a re an outlet for their needs right here in the Wolfboro community. The increase to Taylor's property certainly will increase the value of abutting properties. We have heard from abutters that they're very excited for the ability uh, of us to build this and their ability then in the future to use us as a resource. And of course, the building will provide much needed health care for our residents in the community. Number five, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship because Well, literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship because we had a number of things here. Special conditions of the property that distinguish it from others. So the first thing we noted is, is boarded on all sides by wetlands, one being a prime wetland. We can't get around that. Buildable landmass is very narrow on the onset, narrower to the east, restricting opportunity for development. Nowhere to go. When you do a cost-benefit analysis, or pro forma, it demonstrated that the planned building size is with current number of rooms is required. I mean, in a very basic sense, it has to be of a certain size in order to make this a feasible business enterprise. And four, property is not visible in large part to abutters. So basically, it's super reasonable because we've done everything within our power to make this building the right size programmatically. And by that, I mean for our residents, the things that are put into this building for a program include dining, outlets for entertainment, includes memory care, assisted living, and nursing opportunities when they need it. Those are all things that are programmatic and they are necessary to make this a viable enterprise. So we said that no fair and substantial relationship exists between the height restrictions and the ordinance and the specific application of the provision of the property. We feel that the proposed use is a reasonable one for an existing senior care community. Minimizing the footprint will make this project affordable to prospective residents while reducing the impact of development on existing residents. So we say we have taken every reasonable precaution to fit this within the property to allow for everything that's programmatically required and not to be a negative impact on both the environment and the abutters. 
Any questions about any of that? I have one. How, how many residents would be in the new building? We currently are uh, planning on 61 beds oh. intermingled amongst different levels of care. Any other board members have questions for the applicant? Time? Sarah? Yes. Uh, what is the average cost for care for these 61 beds? Michael Flaherty will answer that question. Hi, I'm Michael Flaherty, President Taylor. Let me um, answer that question because our financial model at a CCRC is a little bit different than just cost per bed. Um, there's an entrance fee. We sell uh, a contract that is overseen by the Department of Insurance. Our licensed portion of our business, the nursing home and the assisted living, is overseen by the Department of Health. So they purchase an entrance fee that amortizes over several years, and then they pay, pay a fee for service. So they pay a little bit more depending on the level of service that they're getting. So on average, it's about $1,200 to $1,500 per unit in independent living, uh, and it goes up from there. Assisted living is for an apartment is somewhere in the neighborhood of about six to $8,000 per month, depending on size of the apartment and services that may be given to those. And then um, memory care is a little bit more than that, and nursing is just shy of $10,000 um, per month. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Uh, just one additional thing um, that we do do as a nonprofit is we provide, I think this is an important point, when folks outlive their financial resources, um, we allow them to continue to live whichever part of the continuum that they lived there. And um, we have averaged somewhere in the neighborhood of $1.7, $1.8 million each year in that charitable care over the last several years. We assume that's going to go up as we grow a little bit. So. I have one other question. How many jobs is it going to create? Um, it's hard to determine an exact amount. But we're I can give you an idea. We currently employ just about 230 to 240 people in our organization in its current size. So it's not unreasonable to expect, depending on how many amenities that we add, and um, probably an additional 80 uh, positions. And, and many of those positions are well-paid professional positions, as in, including the trades. Thank you. Okay. Sarah? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just having a couple of quick thoughts here about the unnecessary hardship and all. They they're already have approval for eight units, as I understand it. Yes, our site plan that was approved at the initial construction included uh, eight more cottages on that location that we visited today. All the infrastructure is already in place, including water, sewer, storm water has already run into that location. So what is the special condition that prevents you from building those eight sites that were granted? What is the hardship that's preventing you from doing that? I, I'm um, having trouble finding a hardship in that particular piece of property. Those original cottages are independent living. They're not approved for, nor are they designed for assisted living. They're not uh, designed for, approved for memory care or nursing. So while we're pre-approved for eight cottages on that site, we're proposing a greater benefit to the overall community, which would be 61 beds of a healthcare facility, which would uh, be able to serve not only our community, but the Sugar Hill community and the greater Wolfboro community. So the hardship is you cannot meet those in eight cottages that are pre-approved. It sounds like a choice. Um, I see no, no um, testimony here from realtors about values on the property, which is one of the five points that we have to look at. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there any members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing board members. Oh. 
Booth, I think I know some of you. Uh, I'm here as a trustee of Huggins Hospital. And I just want the board to know that uh, Huggins uh, trustees and senior management wholeheartedly support and endorse this effort. We're in the healthcare business. And uh, right now, if someone wants to get memory care, someone wants skilled care, they go out of the community. And if we look at Sugar Hill, for instance, plus the uh, Back Bay, 90% are, are people who lived in Wolfboro most of their lives. It, uh, it's important, I think, also that uh, recognize that uh, even though there may be a uh, difference in the uh, height restrictions, and I can understand the, that uh, the variance is certainly justified, and it certainly would be a hardship if indeed uh, we had to uh, abandon the program or uh, immediately uh, change or modify the plans that have been put in place. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I have a question. Hi, my name is Randy Walker. Randy, can you hold? I have one question for the gentleman from Huggins. Do you happen to know offhand, is there a waiting list for people that are getting into the assisted living over in Ossipi? In Ossipi? Yeah. The large assisted... I well, I know. I'm quite aware of my mother. I had heard there's place. a waiting list to get in there, so... Yeah. There's a waiting list virtually everywhere for these uh, these type of facilities. The continuing care facility that I happen to be very familiar with because I live in it is Riverwoods. I was a resident of Wolfboro for 30 years. I sat on this board for 10 years. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that uh, I've lost my train of thought. Give it to me again. I beg your pardon. Waiting list to get into Waiting memory. list. Uh, for Riverwoods, I can tell you it's more than a year. And if you want a cottage, it's six years. It's the demand for the continuing care residential services is, is enormous. It's, it's immense. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Walker. I work for Walker & Varney here in Wolfboro. I'd like to speak in favor and just to echo what Dave said. Now, New Hampshire has got one of the oldest populations in the country, and Wolfboro clearly has its fair share of elderly people. My mother similarly was in a facility like this, and it was a long waiting period, and I think that it's wonderful that a facility like Taylor Community wants to come to Wolfboro as opposed to another town to provide this service to our elderly rather than having another town have this facility. Uh, they've been a great asset to the town. Uh, they provide needed services for our are elderly uh, and they want to build a fairly significant building here. It may be a little taller than what we'd require for the 35 feet, but another 10 feet for a commercial building. And we are in a commercial business district. This is, this is not a residential district, even though they primarily use it for residential purposes. There's not a, a, a big variance to ask for. They're not building a skyscraper. It's again within 10 feet and, and below the the, uh, the tree line, and I just would notice, note that on that side of the street, on Bay Street, we've got a lot of commercial uses starting on 109. You've got Clean Cut Construction, Polini Brothers, Top Gear, uh, Lakes Region Restoration, Dance Expressions. Um, then have Diane Guria's uh, 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 chiropractor uh, outfit there. We had Wagon Works, uh, the Napa Store. Uh, Lucas Coffee, all of these are commercial uses on that side of, of Bay Street. Uh, and I think that this facility provides a nice balance uh, to that. And the facility that they're proposing is located on a 30-acre site, and it's somewhat centrally located. And if we drive by on a daily basis, you won't even see it. And I drove in there this morning just to get a look at it, and I was very impressed how immaculately it was kept. You know, great people in there. Is, as these people will attest, they do a wonderful job uh, with, that, uh, with that facility. And given the fact that it's going to be well screened, not only from the neighbors, none of whom I believe will speak against this, and to Sarah's point about realtors, I don't believe there'll be any diminution in value of property. Uh, and I think the best way to determine that is when you have neighbors that are objecting, and I believe we have none that would suggest that that's the case. 
Uh, this facility supports the public interest. That's essentially their mission, to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of, of the community. Uh, it will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood, which they have already been embedded in uh, for two decades. I think substantial justice would occur because, they're, again, they're well off of Bay Street, below the tree line, will not be seen by, um, by the neighbors. Uh, fair market value shouldn't be impacted at all. This facility has done a great job, and with a new building, they will continue to perpetuate, I think, that great job. And I think that as far as one of the special conditions that they may have, that although it's a 30-acre site, uh, there are wetlands in the area that they would like to, to build in. And they really have two choices. They can go out or they can go up. And because of the wetlands, they can't go out. So invariably, they have to go up, which is why they're bumping into that height restriction. Uh, but again, it's fairly innocuous at only 10 feet uh, above the 30-foot uh, above the, uh, requirement. So I would respectfully request that you approve this, uh, this application. I think that it's not only consistent with our our ordinance, but also consistent with the master plan, which encourages this type of usage. If you just state your name for the public. I'm a resident at Stark Bay. I'm a trustee, Taylor Community. My husband is dementia care in Laconia for five years. I have been traveling five years, over five years. Laconia. I just want to say that Taylor has worked diligently, as I've been on the board for a number of years, to move this plan forward be even before Sugar Hill came on the horizon. Taylor wished to provide services in Laconia. I suggest that you might think long and hard about where people live in Wolfboro, go for dementia care, assisted living, and nursing care because there isn't much here. So I request that you approve this. Even though I live and I have a vested interest in this, I just want you to know that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Board members? Sarah has a question. Oh, Sarah. Look, I, I have some questions for the, perhaps the architect. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I wonder what the pitch of the roof is, and I wonder if they, they attest in their um, information that they have taken uh, steps to reduce the height of the building, and I was interested in what that is because it says building height of 44 feet, which is considerably more than 35. So at this time, our team will come up and walk through that, Mark Moeller and Nick schedule. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Moeller uh, from JSA Design in, in Portsmouth. Um, if I understand your question, uh, you asked what steps we undertook to investigate. Uh, my initial question is what is the pitch of the roof? It is 10 and 12. Okay. So the, the building, um, if I may, I can give you a very brief overview if you'd like of of what you're seeing in the color rendering that's before you on the easel and some of the other uh, conditions that wrap around the footprint. So um, to make a long story short, it is a three-story building, but it has a walkout basement, if you will, along the backside uh, facing the woods. The, the rendering that you see on the easel represents the view from Taylor Drive that's what um, the general public and visitors will, will be seeing. The building height is calculated from the average existing grade to the midpoint of the pitched roof. Um, 
So the existing grade is actually five feet lower on average than what you see in front. So on the front of the building, from the finished grade, and I realize it's the average existing grade that is the reference point, but what will people be seeing when the building is constructed at the finish grade to the peak of the roof, not the midpoint, but the peak, that will still be below 35 feet. Um, from finish grade to the midpoint of the pitch on the front will only be 27 feet. It's really because we have this walkout basement condition on the back side um, that is creating the, the necessity for the relief of, of, the, of the building height. Um, we, we did investigate early on in the design process what it would take to, to take the, the minimum program that Taylor is looking to create for the memory care and the, the nursing and the assisted living, and what would we have to do to, to make that building fit uh, on this small parcel. And if it were a two-story building, basically what would happen is the footprint, as you could imagine, would need to expand. We'd have to take that three and a half stories worth of program and spread it out. By spreading it out, we're gonna be impacting the woods. We'd be cutting down a lot more trees, in other words, in order to get this two-story thing to fit on this parcel that we have. So we've, we've taken the stance that we're trying to keep as compact a footprint as we can uh, uh, and keep as much of the buffering trees that we have and provide the amount of site parking that's required and, and try to keep it all on this, this one parcel. And we don't need to try to expand into the cottage areas that uh, are across the street. Um, and I have one other exhibit that I'd like to share with you. It may be a little bit hard to read, but what I want to uh, show you, this is a, just a footprint uh, of the entire building. And if you notice, along essentially two-thirds of that footprint, there is a dark line, it's a slightly green line. That represents the, the three-story, as I described it earlier, the three-story portion. So you know, roughly 60% of our footprint is that one condition that you saw in that rendering, uh, the color rendering. The, the part that doesn't have the green line represents that walkout basement condition where we have this exposed uh, uh, lower, lower level. Um, and that, you know, that makes up the, the, the balance uh, of the percentage, you know, roughly, roughly 39%. Of, Excuse of, me, could you explain why that drawing there does not match the drawing in our package? It's on the letter stated JSA where it lists the two conditions. That's not my question. My question is why does, does this not match? It's, it is the same drawing. I just added the green line so it's a little bit more visible from the distance that you're at. Yeah, there is a, a notation on that drawing that shows the same, uh, the same data that I just recited. I just added the green line to help you see it from a distance. Any other questions that I can answer while I'm up here? Any other questions from the board, the architect? Nope. Thank you. Board members? I'm good. Sarah? I think that's all my questions for now. We go through the five criteria ourselves. Uh, number one, the variance is uh, not contrary to the public interest. Uh, I can take on that one. It's, uh, I, I think it was adequately outlined in Taylor's uh, paperwork here that they sent to us as part of the application. Uh, it, this does serve the public interest, uh, and this healthcare, the healthcare of, in our community is, is definitely a needed 
thing for our, our community, being an aging population. Wolfboro is the, uh, has the oldest population in the state of New Hampshire at an average age of 60.1 years old. Uh, beyond that, it is, uh, uh, it's nice to see that they're coming to Wolfboro as the person who got up and spoke, you know, uh, having a resident of Wolfboro to drive, you know, to Laconia to see her husband for the last five years. This will add a service to uh, the Taylor community and to Wolfboro that'll be beneficial for both. And I, that's why I think it fulfills number one, personally, to me. Luke? Yes. Um, I have a concern about that in that if you wanted to go to Riverwoods, if you want to go to Taylor, if you want to go to Sugar Hill, you have to have a certain level of income. And this in no way relieves the congestion for places like Mountain View, which is where the majority of the people in Wolfboro will go. So I'm not certain I agree with that answer for question number one. Okay. I'm not saying that you know, the units aren't needed, but a variance is granted. A variance is something that's not allowed, and it has to have a really good reason. And I, I think um, it's a good idea to add additional health care, but I think to attribute this as being beneficial to the general public is perhaps a little misleading. Okay. I think it's for a specific section oh, of the general public. I can comment on that from personal experience. Both my parents live at Sugar Hill, 95 and 94, and they're excited about the fact of Taylor owning the property now and the ability that should someday they lose their mental faculty and they need assisted living or memory care, that it's going to be within the same organization in the same town where their family is. Well, that's interesting. Perhaps you should have stepped down as well. Not necessary. You can, you can say what you want, Mr. Senecal, but I tell you what, I did 13 years on the Board of Selectmen, and I'm very well aware of what can be bias and when people should step down because of perceived bias. Okay, let's continue. Number two, yep. I'll do that one. The requirement that the variance not be contrary to the public interest is related to the equivalent that it be consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. When, when the explanation came through of condition one or condition A and condition B, where 60% of it is really the back of the building and 39% is the front, it doesn't seem like that's going to affect the neighborhood whatsoever. The building height and profile, like they stated, are shielded from the abutters. Nobody's going to be hindered, and I believe that reasonable uh, efforts was demonstrated by the applicant. Anyone else on number two? Three? Financial justice. I mean, I, I think number three is self-explanatory. They, I think they did reasonable efforts to limit. I like the explanation that if they couldn't go the extra floor, how it would just be spread all over. But I think in a lot of businesses like that, if you had to turn around and you couldn't do the third floor or have the 60 beds and you got cut down to 40, it wouldn't be economically feasible to run an operation. Uh, number four, the values of the surrounding properties will not be negatively impacted for the following reasons. Uh, because of the environment where it sits, I mean, there's going to be very little, there won't be the ability for any other uh, buildings around that that will be able to see it directly. Uh, it's, a, it's in a fairly commercial zone, uh, though it's hidden inside the Taylor community itself. So I, I think that, and though we have no real estate, uh, you know, reviews of it, I do feel that it's only going to be enhancement of the area, uh, as stated by Taylor community. I mean, this is a 20 plus million dollar investment. Uh, in the town of Wolfboro, uh, and I, I don't, that would be, that's where I'd go with that. i say that it, it, it's not going to negatively impact the... If, the, if what they build is the quality of what else you see in that neighborhood, yeah. it's going to be nice. Yeah. I would say that we have, this is a neutral point, we have no realtors 
expert testimony that it will or will not. Okay. Number five, literal enforcement of the provision of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship. Okay. I think that goes back to the economics of running the operation. I said a moment ago. But also where it's located, there are pre-existing non-conformities with the wetlands, the size of the land mass, the, the fact that it's not one big square. Again, the uh, item three cost benefit analysis demonstrate the size and the number of rooms to operate a facility as a profitable entity requires that size. And it's not visible. It's, it's a well put together. You almost drive past it when you're driving down Bay Street. Very nicely done. Yes. Uh, the commercial in the area, I believe it was Randy gave the list of several of them, are, are all virtually one or perhaps two stories. And uh, it might be two and a half stories for the chiropractor, but the business next to that is single flat roof type place. And um, every other business in that area borders on wetlands. You go over to Filter Bed Road and it's extremely wet. And um, I think um, the cost-benefit analysis is what caused them to realize that if they made it smaller, they would get less money. And that's not a criteria that we're supposed to be considering. We're supposed to be looking at what's going on with the piece of property itself. So I don't think that point's been met. Is there anything else from the board? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I, Tim Cronin, make a motion to approve case number 16-V-21 for Taylor Community, having found the applicant application materials and related discussion to demonstrate compliance with the five variance criteria has been met. I will second it. Is there any discussion? There'll be three voting members. Sarah? No. Tim? Yes. And I am yes. You have your variance. Mr. Mr. Chairman, jumping forward to other items on the agenda, um, not aware of any Q&As that were submitted to the town attorney and any responses, uh, or uh, I've not been made aware of any potential member discussion items for this evening. Uh, one thing I will mention going down to number five, uh, so there was discussion at this board's last meeting to continue the minutes of June 23 and July 19 to the August meeting because of attendance, which you are still lacking in general part. Okay. So my suggestion might be to move all the minutes until the next meeting. I agree with Tavis. Yeah. I think we should postpone them. Make that motion. I agree. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's a motion. Okay. Sure. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And now you're down to number six. Anything else from the board? I make so moved. <laughs> Move to what? To adjourn. To adjourn. Yeah. yeah. Second. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. So Thanks, Jake. Mm -hmm.